Hello guys, today I have a set of short tips how to make your Laravel code shorter. Laravel is full of different helpers, blade directors, if statements and a lot of stuff that can help you to save a few symbols here and there, a few if statements here and there and make your code shorter and more readable. So let's start with number one, blade check if the user is logged in or not. And I see a lot of people doing something like if auth check or commented out if auth user check like that. And then in here you show dashboard or login register, right? So in blade, there are specific blade directories to avoid if auth check, you can do just auth like this. So auth, else, and auth. And there's also an opposite directive. So for example, if user is not logged in and it is done, so let's switch those. So change this and instead of auth, we write guest. So if it's guest or not, and then you have and guest. To be honest, else and and if also works. So you can write and if or and guest. Also, you can write else guest and that should all work. Refresh. We didn't break anything. Tip number two is how to get logged in user data in the blade whenever you need them. I see quite a lot of people, especially junior developers, pass the user from the controller, something like this. So get user like auth user and then pass that from the controller. And then using auth, you need to add the facade for use. And this all works, but instead of that in index blade, auth user can be accessed like this with a helper. Auth user, or you can use facade directly here, auth user. It would also work. Let's try it out, let's refresh. So this is the name and the ID of the user. So that works. My personal preference is to use helper just to avoid any errors of that auth facade being not initialized somewhere. That helper is global, so you can use it wherever in the blade, in artisan commands, in any class. So it's a global thing. And then with user ID, you can do something like this. Let's refresh, still works, but there's even shorter way. Shortcut for user ID is auth ID with brackets. So it's not a field, it's a function. It checks the actual field of your user model auto increment, which is ID by default, but maybe it's different. Maybe you override it in the model so that function checks for it and returns the ID number. Refresh, we didn't break anything. Tip number three is about a for each loop in blade. You don't need to check if the record list is empty like this. So I see a lot of people doing that. So if there is a count or is empty, there's something. So if not is empty or check for the record count in another way, you don't need to do that. Instead of doing that, so if else, let's delete if and else, and then change that for each to for else. There's a special loop for else, and then we change that and for each to empty. So there's a different syntax. So for each changes to for else with empty and for else like this. Let's reformat that. And then you have one fewer if statement. You have just for else, which is the main loop. And if it's empty, so if the tasks is empty, it shows this portion of the code. Tip number four is about initializing carbon instances with now or today. So I see a lot of people doing carbon now in controllers or even in the blades and then use carbon like this. Laravel has a few helpers to avoid initializing that. So in any place in any Laravel project in controller on a blade, you can use just now function. Now is a helper of Laravel, which does all the initialization of carbon under the hood. So if we refresh that list, nothing should be broken. Still good. But also there's now and today. It works in almost the same way. So if we refresh, nothing changes, but let's see DD today. Refresh and we have, let's zoom it in. So you have date with zeros if you need that. So today's date, but without the time. And if you need now, refresh and DD, you also have the timestamp. So today and now is roughly similar, but a bit different. Tip number five is how to log some value instead of doing DD in the log. So there is a function called info. Info is a shorter helper for log info, and it will write all the value into Laravel log file, which is in storage logs Laravel log. I've made it empty and let's try it out, refresh the page. 
and the page is loading. So you should use that in case of you need to debug that value, but you don't want to stop the page like DD. So if we open our Laravel log again, it contains the info with exactly what we need. And in the info, you can put anything like string, object collection, it should all work. So you can put even more complex objects to the log. For example, let's do info tasks. Or actually, let's paginate by three. So it's not too big. Refresh the page and we open Laravel log and we see the object of the tasks. And on the related note, if you do want to use DD for tasks, there is a shorter way. So let's delete that one. You probably would do something like DD tasks and refresh and you have DD, right? But do you know you can use DD on the collection? So tasks, created, subdate, paginate, and then do DD at the very end. So you don't need to write it on a new line and the result is the same and maybe even better because it shows the collection. So DD is a Laravel collection function which you can use on get DD or first DD or paginate DD. Tip number six is about abort function, abort helper. I see a lot of people doing the check some kind of check and if it is false then you return abort 403 or abort 404 or something like that. So there are a few helpers that make it one liner in the Laravel. So there is abort if and then you pass in the condition inside of it and then what code should it abort with. So something like that, like this. So one liner. Result is the same. We refresh the page and we get the forbidden page. And also there's abort unless, which flips the situation, flips the condition. But I'm not a big fan personally of unless function. There are a few more helpers with unless in Laravel, but I'm not a big fan because it's much harder to read. Abort if is kind of readable in almost English language. And abort unless, then you need to think what does it mean unless, what is the condition? So it's kind of a double negative. So I wouldn't advise to use that. But abort if is a great one-liner to avoid a separate if statement. Tip number seven is about hidden methods in forms for Blade. Historically, there was a function called CSRF token and you would create something like this. So underscore token is the actual field that you need for CSRF protection. But then with time, Laravel got shorter helpers. So one shorter helper was CSRF field so then you don't need that input hidden and it would take care of that for you. So CSRF field is the same, but then at some point it got even shorter into blade directive. So instead of CSRF field, you can just do CSRF. And similarly, if you have a put method form, there was method field put. So it creates a put method for the update form, but a shorter way to do that is add method put something like this. So there are CSRF and method blade directives. Tip number eight is about encrypting the password if someone registered. So for example, I see a lot of people doing hash make from password and it all works. And it actually is part of Laravel breeze as I'm looking at it. But there's a shorter way. If you don't want to change encrypting algorithm, hashing algorithm, which is by default bcrypt, then you can use bcrypt directly. So there is a file called hash manager in the vendor folder in the core Laravel, and it gets the hashing mechanism, the driver from config. Otherwise, by default, it's bcrypt. And there is a special file config hash in PHP, which is not in vendor, it's in config, and default driver is bcrypt. And there are other drivers supported. But if you want to use default bcrypt, instead of hash make, there's a helper called bcrypt, just like this. And then you don't need to add use hash on top. Not sure if it's added. Yep. So this one is not needed anymore. And bcrypt is a shorter helper. And you can use it wherever in the controller in artisan command or anywhere without using hash make. And tip number nine is about redirecting back to the previous URL. So quite often I see people doing something like store or update and then redirecting back like this, or maybe there is a with message or something or with input, and there's no need to do full redirect back. There's a shorter way. First, let's see how it works. We enter some task and we are redirected back to the same tasks create, but there's a shorter way, which I wanted to show you is just return back. So there's a helper, specific helper in Laravel, just back, which does the same thing, just in a shorter way. So let's try if it all works. 
we save the task and we redirect it back successfully. So these are short tips about various parts of Laravel, the things that I've learned over five plus years working with Laravel. And if you want more videos like this one, and if you want to support me on this mission of shooting daily videos, check out one of our free products from myself and my team, Laravel Admin Panel Generator, my courses, which is 15 courses at the moment, or LiveWire Kit set of components. And by purchasing one of them, you support these daily videos for free. See you guys in other videos.